Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen. So we have to move on because we realize that, that the timekeeper is very strict. <laughs> they will switch off after one hour. Uh, so uh, I'm Rose Lee from uh, Malaysia. We have in this session, this is the CTO integrate uh, session and this is mainly on learning and uh, it's going to be interactive and with me, uh, Dr. Tariq Shafi, well known to all of you, Dr. Said Tahir and Said Alam. And uh, Said Alam is going, has a case to present and we will uh, then uh, go through the paces. And at certain points, uh, we would like to just stress uh, on certain things. If there is any questions from your side, please, please ask them. Do you have a mic? You should have a mic. Can I have another mic, please? So all three of us, so the, the, pan, the, the real expert here will be Dr. Tariq Shafi and Dr. Said Tahir. So we are going to try to uh, you know, emphasize on, um, uh, on the technical aspects of things. So please be interactive. We will uh, go according to what you want. Uh, so we're going to go through especially the tips and tricks. Now, can I just have a no, uh, show of hands? Who does CTOs like every day? Almost every day. I mean, all, I, all of you, because I don't uh, know all of you, are all you considered experts in your field, you do regularly, and no one trainees or very young who is about to start or just starting? Yeah, so it's like you're comfortable with it and you, uh, uh, you, know, you just want to com contribute and see if there's something, something a bit extra. Is that, is that what? Yeah, uh, most of the time it depends on the case selection. Mm -hmm. Mm. How much you have to pick up from your other departments? Mm. So it depends on the case selection and in the area or the okay. in which you're right. working. Okay. So it depends on the case selection as well. All right. So, Tarek, we are dealing with experts here. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Then <laughs> we know. Yes. All right. Okay. That's good. All is good. Okay. So because we need to tailor the presentation and the discussion according to uh, the crowd and. Uh, Okay, we'll see how it goes. If uh, we find that uh, we need to stress upon certain things, then we do so, otherwise we carry on. All right, so feel free to ask, so Said, uh, would you want to, so side. again, we're going to go tips and tricks, we're going to go straight for integrate CTO here, uh, and uh, we'll discuss reasons why, so the clinical aspects will take a, a back side, because uh, here we are going to go and uh, discuss about the techniques. Yeah, uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am presenting this uh, interesting case which illustrates some of the key issues which we encounter in our practice. So this is a 60 years old lady and she has hypertensive and angina class 3 for the last one year. She has normal ECG and echo. She has no previous PV PCI attempt and she is on optimal medical therapy. Next. So this is the uh, left coronary angiogram. As we see, the circumflex has mild disease proximally. Next. This one? Now, this is the cranial view. Yeah. And it shows disease proximally, and in the mid, the artery is total, with some bridging collaterals. Next. Yeah. Here we again see the uh, proximal cap with a side branch right at the takeoff of uh, this proximal cap. Yeah. Next. The right coronary artery is fairly normal. Next. Now this is important. This is the RAO view showing the collateral supply to the LAD. I will ask my co uh, colleagues to explain it further. This the right about the collateral supply to the LAD and the possibility of any interventional collaterals. Okay, um, I think uh, the more important one to see is uh, we will have to make a decision whether it is going to go for integrate or retrograde. I think that's the most important uh, decision to make yeah. in terms of priority. Do so you have yeah, like, so yeah. uh, basically, the collateral supply is mainly through the epicardial collateral from the conus branch. Plate, plate. And there is also please, please. septal collateral supply to the LED. The septals are, although uh, seems interventional, but are tartarous and seems difficult to cross. Now. Okay, so can we have the views that shows the uh, yeah, total is, and... Yeah, plate. Uh, the collateral from right to left, uh, 
the best view is the Ario Kardet. Ario Kardet. Yes. And the important thing is there should be no panning and no movement of the. Uh, okay. Whenever, Next. Uh, whenever you are taking uh, cholesterol injection, two ways are there. One is uh, do donor vessel injection under fluoro. And once it's filling the retrograde vessel, then start with uh, after one, two seconds with uh, the main vessel, uh, which is the target vessel, and you. Um, second method is start both in Cheney and then record it accordingly, because it is the main step in interpretation of uh, uh, starting the strategies for CTO. Now, this slide is, uh, illustrates the description of CTO. What is the length? What is the, how is the proximal cap, the distal vessel? whether it is taught to us, the, mainly the JCTO score. Any so, comments from yeah. the audience yeah. regarding CAPE? Well, well, okay. So I think, uh, what do you think about, say, the, about the uh, use for a contralateral injection for CTOs? You do it for every patient? For every patient? Uh, is that a mandatory uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. Uh, whenever I'm trying to do CTO, uh, my first strategy is to always take two catheters. It may be both from radial or one radial and one femoral, or both femoral. So it depends on uh, the situation. Uh, and one which is the guiding, uh, you can take both guides, or one is a diagnostic in the donor vessel plus. Nowadays it is recommended that both the catheters uh, should be guiding with a protective wire in the donor vessel for any uh, future uh, injury or something on the table and to rescue the donor vessel as well. So uh, two catheters, seven French at least for the target vessel, CTO, and uh, six for the opposite vessel. Tariq, what do you want to look for when you do a contralateral injection? Really? Uh, yeah. the first, first, the one exception, if there is the ipsilateral collateral, yeah. from the first, say from the septal to the distal LED, or from proximal RCA to distal RCA, then you don't need to do a dual injection. You can go through the yeah. single injection. But what are you looking for? when you do the yeah. um, uh, yeah. contralateral injection? And sometimes a tri triple injection also for the post-bypass, yeah. just to complete the discussion. Because so sometimes you just want to see the... So the, yeah. first thing, we are looking into the CTO anatomy. CTO anatomy comprised of uh, the proximal cap, the CTO body, and the distal cap, and uh, interventional collaterals. So that we can uh, uh, decide for the hybrid strategy, whether we have to go anti-grade, uh, wiring or integrated dissection re-entry, retrograde wiring, retrograde dissection re-entry. Uh, so, just a little comment in that when you're going to do a real serious CTO, you're not really sure if anti-grade will succeed or not. So you've got to get guiders in both the situations. And uh, really, if you want to have a, and you've got to get the appropriate length also, like 90 centimeter, if you're going to use uh, Corsair, because if you re use the collaterals, it's, you're going to use up all your 150 centimeter of Corsair. So uh, either you shorten your catheters or you take 90 millimeters. So, one catheter, 90 yeah. centimeters. And then, you know, the little little trick of fluoro then records, you know, it has to be unmag, un and uh, properly no, no panning. panning, and then yeah. it will record it because to pick up the collateral, it becomes very tricky. And, and fluoro run. doesn't have that sensitivity to pick up all the collaterals. So probably have all the thing, and I think for a Real purest, I mean, for the left system, it's not a problem getting the support from the XP, but yeah. for the right, you need to anchor the balloon because all this setup will take like 45 minutes. And uh, you don't want to do a second puncture uh, with a fully hypernized patient. So yeah. I think you must get your system all set, be very serious, though. And, and of course, again, in our system, make sure all the hardware is rare. And uh, you may, must have a wire manager because you're going to use so many wires, you lose track which is wire, which wire is which. So you, one guy needs to just look after the wires because there can be so much changing of wires. Uh, in the interest of time, if you start looking for wires, you're dropping the wires, who's cleaning it, who's keeping it, who's keeping track of it. That takes a long time. If you get all these things right, then you have a great chance of a quick procedure. That, that's some way. I think those are important points. Uh, the other thing about uh, contralateral injection is that uh, sometimes you find that it's actually a physiological CTO and not a real CTO. And sometimes the length is not as long as you th think it is. So those are important points that I, I think uh, contralateral injection is uh, very important. But Said, let me just uh, go through you because you have got this. 
tell us, tell us why you thought that this is a proper anti-grade rather than you know, maybe a retrograde approach. I think those are the features that you want to... Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, the, to be the collateral supply from the RCA were mainly epicardial, which is always uh, risky if we go through it, epicardial collateral from the conus branch. And the septal supply, although this looks interventional from the PDA, but uh, these were a bit tortuous. So there is always a greater risk of perforation or some complication in the retrograde. So my initial thought was to attempt uh, initially the anti-grade wire escalation, and then if it fails, and then the anti-grade dissection and re-entry. Anyone from your side, Said or uh, Tariq? Yes, uh, sure. As regards the international collaterals, the, it is uh, uh, two times difficult crossing from right to left, compared with crossing from uh, left to right. LED to RCA is simpler, uh, compared with crossing from PDA towards LED and the uh, angle of uh, entry, exit, they are very, very important. Yeah. And especially in this case, uh, the whole circulation is supplied by the RCA. So working through these collaterals carries the risk of ischemia. So it's not uh, that safe. So we should try our best to go for this uh, anti-grid wiring, the anti-grid uh, dissection re-entry, rather than going retrograde. But what, what are the features? What are the features you think from this, I can see this angiogram has been blown up, for example. What are the yeah. features that would say that this is going to be a difficult integrate, or more difficult integrate? Yeah. So yeah, do you think this is going to be uh, difficult? Uh, first look, yeah. Uh, yeah. Before. First look. So, uh, please, Rani. Like Rani, uh, maybe we can go to the first, uh, before that. B before, before, before. Yeah. Go back. Sorry, okay, questions uh, first before we. Uh, yeah, can I just ask uh, mm. which CTO will you will not even try anti gradely either by, by escalation, whatever? Yeah. I think that may be yes, good for us to know a, when is, not what not to touch. Yeah, yeah this is an austere CTO. Austere. So it's an austere RCA. No, this, uh, this is the slide. So only uh, you can go retrograde, not anti grade, because you, you cannot. Uh, 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 put the guiding catcher for the RCA, so you have to go retrograde. Okay, as far as <laughs> if the catcher fits in, you will try. No, the best is to go retrograde. Best okay. For is team. there any JCTO score where you think, okay, or whatever, you know, look, I'm not going to try integrate here? So or? we are discussing uh, what factors they, they determine whether we should go integrate or we yeah. should go retrograde. I think it's very important for everybody when not to touch it <laughs> integrately. That's very important. Before people start learning how to do it, first thing they should learn when not to do it, when not to touch it. But uh, yeah. uh, one comment that uh, integrate anti is always uh, safer than the retrograde because there are more complications yeah. in the retrograde yeah. technique. I, so I think those are important are questions because you, when you, uh, as a person who's doing it, you, the first thing, especially when you are uh, doing it uh, in an early phase, you want to know exactly what you do. Retrograde is more difficult uh, technically. Uh, Anti-grade is simpler. Yes, of course, the as osteo lesions are very difficult because you cannot even sit. But uh, most times are not people still try to use anti-grid first because you want to prepare the vessel. So when you prepare the vessel, when you do retrogridly, you have already some, done some work and it's going to be um, uh, super uh, easier. So uh, I believe that uh, yeah. uh, all should uh, you know, try anti-grid as much as possible to prepare, at least prepare the vessel. Yeah. The okay, just a final comment. Before people want to do these CTOs, they must have some sort of time management cath lab management, because if you have a patient, you have one cath lab, you've got a primary outside, you want to do a CTO, I think these things are very important to organize and plan it. I think these are, end of the day, there are patients there. Uh, it's not a mature feeling that uh, I think early or late in your careers, it doesn't matter really. I think you've just, made, what happened, people cause problems when they rush, oh, there's a 50-year-old, anterior STEMI is waiting, can you please rush through? I think the time management and make sure at that time uh, you're not going to rush because you have no idea how long will it take. The, Again, the, unfavor the unfavorable, uh, as asked by Dr. Rusli, the unfavorable feature in this CTO was uh, actually the branch at the ostium and ambiguous yeah. proximal cap. Yeah. Yeah. 
but the lesion was although the lesion was not that lengthy it yeah. was less than uh, 20 yeah but the unfavorable feature yeah. was the branch at the ost yeah yeah i think what's the act that you recommend uh, sorry say what uh, act that you recommend yeah uh, uh, act this? for retrograde uh, i think it should be more than 350 and for integrate if it is uh, more than 300 is fair good I think those are important points. I had a patient who uh, developed thrombus and died because no one actually kept uh, account here. Yeah. Uh, sir, specifically in this case, if we see in the caudal view, the plaque, I think it is started from the left main. Uh, does it uh, uh, have some impact on uh, doing or attempting this CTO? Because in the caudal view, uh, it seemed to me like that uh, in the left yeah. main, the disease starts it from starts, the left yeah. main. So is there any impact on attempting this? Pressure dampening? Yeah. There was no pressure dampening. Uh, regarding the setup, actually, uh, what I used was a, a N8 French EBU 3.5 guiding catheter with long sheath. And in the right, it was um, JR4, 6 French. And uh, I kept a safety wire, Sion, and the RCA. Uh, God forbid if there is any complication to the feeding artery, so we can manage it uh, timely. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was put, it was put at the end. Yeah, yeah, at the end when uh, we were doing the stenting and uh, uh, ballooning, it was put there. We'll see it. Uh, actually, the uh, proximal cap was away from the uh, ostium of the circumflex. That's why, yeah. You wired it later. Yeah, I, uh, I believe, I think I agree that uh, this one, you should not have any problems because you're not actually intervening at the ostium, so that should be all right. Yeah. Uh, and, um, but you're gonna use two, two, two wires anyway towards the end as we'll stand, right? Um, I, I think what you mentioned also very important because you know the Japanese, why they're successful, is to study the angiogram. The angiographic study is very important. And that's the reason I think uh, we should look at it properly. Uh, and then they think about it, they plan about it, and they go in with a, with a view of, I'm going to be access successful. You can't be doing things like halfway and say, oh, let me try. Uh, you know, unless it's a simple thing, because it's not fair to the patient. The patient is going to pay for it, the risk of the procedure and so on. So go in with an attitude that you want to do the best you can. And as you said, uh, this is where, you know, this we're talking about just integrate. You have a retrograde approach and so on, and al the algorithm. But really, you know, one of the things that has been stated again and again for CTO is that you should not go into a failure mode. So once you try it, you must give a certain time that you say, I'm going to try this technique. If not, I'm going to already have going on to plan B. So that's the most important. Yeah. Last point. Sorry, I'm talking too much. In our cath labs, we have a CTO trolley. So wherever we're going to do a CTO, whichever lab, that trolley will go there, because otherwise it's difficult to find the balloon, sapphire, whatever, different wires and uh, whatever you need is difficult. And then in, in the CTO really needs planning and organization. So we have a CTO, it's called a CTO trolley, all you know, small balloons, wires, whichever, uh, uh, different wires, the whole escalation wire goes with the whole trolley. Okay, so we'll say, look, okay, I'm gonna do a CTO, they say, okay, Get, uh, you know, get the cath uh, CTO trolley from lab yeah. five or lab four, whichever. So that makes life a lot easier for us. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, uh, another yes. problem which we encounter in our practice is getting into the proximal cap if there is tortricity proximal to the CTO cap. So how we tackle that, we'll see in the next slides. Because uh, most of the time, we are giving just a small curve, a primary curve to the CTO wires, and there is angulated uh, take up of the CTO. So it is very difficult to cross the wire into the proximal cap. For that reason, we should uh, replace the wire. Uh, we should take a workhorse wire and take it to the proximal cap and then replace it with a CTO wire, as seen in this clip. We are I, I cannot uh, emphasize that very well. Because if you use a stiff wire, you yeah. might cause a dissection. So yeah. it's always safer yeah, to yeah. get it in before it change. Yeah. It has happened to me. Trying to save wires, you see this way, problems. Uh, so you're trying to save costs, yeah. you just use one wire and you can't run to problems. 
Yeah. All this remember, safety is more important. Yeah. Right? There, there, there are two methods. One is over-the-wire balloon, and the other one is a micro catheter. Now, the over-the-wire balloon mostly come at the size of one and one point five with a dot at the mid, where the micro catheter have a dot on the proximal uh, on the distal edge. So it's easy to have micro catheter, and it's help in manipulation of the proximal cape of a CTO rather than taking over-the-wire balloon. Cost is an issue with the micro catheter, but once you are playing with CTO, cost doesn't matter. You have to take micro catheter because micro catheter are soft, they slide easily, while the over the wire balloon, they are stiff and they kink. If they, stiff, they, they kink, you have to remove the, all the stuff and then start again. So better to start with micro catheter from the start. Yeah. And I think, uh, using the work horse wire, as uh, Dr. Rossi pointed out, is the curve or bend which we give to the wire. For the workhorse uh, trackability, wire trackability, we give the two curves and a broader curve. While for the CTO wire, we give very tiny, small curve. So once the micro catheter is at the proximal cap, then we should uh, replace the workhorse with the CTO wire so that we can uh, make a, a proper CTO bend for it. Yeah, because if you make a bend in a CTO wire, it's not going to be useful when you take the power decreases. Yeah. So these diagrams so are similar uh, also, and it's penetration power is a broader band. So, say, do you this, put do you yeah. use a micro catheter yeah. or over yeah. a balloon too? Yeah, I'm just showing these diagrams were made according to the case. Uh, this is the uh, just a simple curve. Uh, the uh, single curve was given, and the wire was buckling to the circumflex, as seen in this diagram. Then, what we did, what were other options we have? like this. This is the, the wire is not going into the uh, LED because the, um, the takeoff is angulated. Now, a larger curve was given to the workhorse wire and the wire reached the proximal cap. But we had another problem. Yeah. Whether to use the uh, OTW balloon or the micro catheter. Because to use the OTW balloon, as is seen in this diagram, it will also buckle the wire into the circumflex because the proximal portion is short of the LED. So, what we did that we used um, uh, Corsair Pro micro catheter and the wire was fielder, uh, the wire was exchanged to a fielder XTA wire, as is seen in this diagram. And uh, the other options which we have if the, the wire is not going into the angulated uh, artery is to use an angulated microcatheter like the Venture or the Supercross. Now, we okay. have reached uh, the proximal sorry. cap Be now. Before that, any, any brief questions on the, about the techniques? And yeah. Yes, it is. So because we find it quite difficult to get hold in UK now. So, and it's quite a risky thing. I mean, if you just play it with on your own finger, you realize it. this is quite, you know, it's not, it's not a really a, just a game. I've been disappointed with uh, Supercross all my time, <laughs> the, the ones I've used it. The, of course, 90 degree, when you put the wire, it's not 90 degree anymore. So if you want to use it, you're gonna use about 120, so at least it keeps track, uh, but I've, I've not been impressed with it. Maybe some of the people have been more experienced. Yeah. Yeah. So now the strategies. We have reached a proximal cap with ambiguous proximal cap with a branch. Now this is the hybrid algorithm. So this uh, algorithm, there are a number uh, that uh, is available. It helps you. I think if you get, you've got to, you know, you've got one algorithm, you study it, and it's fairly clear, uh, you know, this is what you should do, and so on and so forth. And it helps you in terms of when you think about your, uh, your, uh, you know, strategy, your progress, and so on. And it will be useful to, for you to uh, know this. So uh, if we tell you our case with this hybrid algorithm, we have ambiguous proximal cap. And the, we'll take the uh, intermission collateral as inappropriate, and the distal uh, target is good in our case. So, integrate is a good option for us because the lesion length is also less than 20. Yeah. So, according to this algorithm, we started with integrate wiring. Now, these are the other techniques which we have 
anti-grade wire escalation, retrograde wire escalation, anti-grade dissection reentry, and retrograde dissection and reentry. Okay, let, let me ask you, because uh, you know, we're talking about wires. Uh, Tariq, what does, what's, what's the wires that you have on your shelf to, for CTOs? Uh, there are many types of wires, but uh, mostly for anti-grade purpose, uh, four wires are enough. Four wires? Four wires. Okay. So one is uh, your fielder family. Take the fielder uh, XT A or R or XT only, or fielder FC one, one of these. In my experience, fielder FC is better because it's not non taper tip and uh, it does not go sub intimate. While the XT R and XT A have the taper tip and they easily enter into sub intimate space. So one wire is fielder family wire. So it is actually a polymer covered. And some of them have the taper tip, like XTA, XTR, and XT. And the fielder FC has, is non-tapered cover, uh, non-tapered tip. So there are uh, polymer jacketed wires. And the uh, tip load is uh, ranging from 0.6 to 0 0.8 to 0.1. So fielder FC is 0 0.8. Yes. And this uh, fielder XTA is uh, 1, and XTR is uh, 0.6. But uh, the, the better uh, not to take uh, that uh, tapered version of it, it's a low ground weight wire mm -hmm. and uh, very torqueable, and it's basically meant for the tapered proximal cap in which you like to track into the micro channels, right. loose tissue tracking. So it's so filter is help, helpful to get into tissue. the micro So this is yes. the one wire. Yeah. The other wire is uh, the and, and other extreme, that is the stiff wire with the uh, have any, uh, more, more uh, tip load, uh, ranging from 12 to 14, so, uh, uh, this is called um, CP12, 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 okay, Conquest, so Conquest Pro, 12, Pro. Okay, and that's second uh, Hornet 14. You oh. choose one mm -hmm. out of these two. Right. Two, three? Even Progress uh, T200 is good. You can take, better to take the uh, CP12, that's much, okay. much better. Right. It's commonly available also. Right. With so the Asahi, it's Asahi. So that's two, that's three? That's two. The th third wire is you take, uh, you select between the, uh, this uh, Pilot 200 or Gladys. All right, the Pilot series. Uh, Pilot four. 200, and the fourth is you choose between the uh, Gaia second and Gaia third. So Gaia wires. That's it. So this, right. if you have, uh, are familiar with these four wires, you can do 90% plus CTO wire. All right. So the same, same, right? same, okay. So you, ah, uh, yes. No, no, nothing of the sorry box. Okay. Keep interrupting. But that weightage and everything is good, but as far as you're using a balloon support. If you're using balloon support or microcatheter, the wire becomes different. They behave differently. So people shouldn't assume that the wire without a balloon support or without a microcatheter is the same as you're describing the weightage point of a penetration point of view. Uh, they, the wire do change. So I think people need to understand that. Yes. And sorry, but in the planning stage, you must assess the patient's renal functions or contrast load. A kept somebody should keep an eye on the contrast load and the radiation. Yes, the best pos best view where you can see better, but again, least radiation too. These things are so important to for a successful uh, procedure that the overall thing has to be you know kept an eye on. Yep, I think important points. So again, the emphasis is once you put in a micro, uh, micro catheter or balloon, the stiffness changes, it actually increases. So at least it, it helps you. Now, wires are really personal. You have to use it, you must know about it, and then you can use it safely and successfully. I think that's a key. For, My, wire, sorry. For wiring, you need to answer two questions. What task you want from the wire? What you want? to get out of the wire, and what are the properties of the wire. So when you answer these two questions, you can easily select uh, the proper wire for the CTO proximal yes. cap, yeah. whether it's a tapered cap, and loose tissue tracking, yes. whether it's a blunt cap yeah. or ambiguous cap. So these are the two important questions. Yeah. What you want to do, and what properties are with the wire which are you, you are using. Yeah. My wires are different. First, of course, I will either use a filter or Gaia. That's my preference. So filter, I tend to use out of all. I tend to use XTA. Why? Because in inventory, you know, I just keep one wire. And I just know about the wires. 
So I, even though I have a XTR or XT, but I tend to use XT8. And then I have the Gaia series. I tend to use two and maybe three. The Conquest, we will talk about the Y escalation. Yeah. And this is a, a, an important concept, Y escalation, the escalation. So for Conquest, it's very stiff. I tend to use Conquest 9. Occasionally, I use 12. Very rarely, I use 820. That's a very stiff wire. Uh, three, and that's about all. Miracle, I hardly use. Ultimate Bros, I have, but it's still softer. The Miracle wires, apparently, you can control uh, much better than the Conquest. Conquest, the only thing about it is, you realize it. If it goes, it just goes, and you don't know whether you are, sometimes you don't know whether you're in and out. And this is where the control lateral injection is very important. So, so, so guy, why is the very pilot? special guy? I, I don't use pilots anymore, even though, you know, uh, I think I believe that's a uh, good wire and important wire. Again, it's just inventory on the shelf. So you need to know what you have on the shelf. You need to know what you want planning to have on the shelf. Because the more wires, the more device you use, the cheaper it's going to be. If you use one set on them, then it's going to be more difficult, more expensive. Uh, yes. Uh, one should use the micros and the over the wire, those who want to. Should, it should only be used to exchange wires, basically. If you need to push it right down and then shove, it will just go in whichever direction it finds. So you use it to exchange it, then you push the wire, and if it buckles too much, you need to then either change directions or change a wire. If you just push it right down and start shoving, it will just go whichever way it finds. So that's not a very good way. Like we know a lot of people who just push the over the wire or micro down and then push the wire the wire will go whichever way to find it. That can be disastrous. So one, the, basically, the over the wire is to exchange the wire, uh, then micro, and then to, of course, uh, follow the wire, you know, not, not f help you increase the pushability on average. So, uh, Anti-grade wiring was attempted with the polymer jacketed wire, yeah. like the XTA, because it has got a bigger tip load than the original XT, and it was uh, used as a wire of choice. So loose tissue tracking was done with this fielder XTA wire. But play it. You think you can play this? Minimize it and then play it. Can you play? Play. No? Can you go back? I mean, crossing is, crossing a CTO is always very exciting, isn't it? <laughs> but, uh, you know, the real challenge will be when you go sub and you're going to try to get back in. Uh, apart from the type and, of wire. And uh, the most which, important uh, thing is always to try to get back in as early as you can. Because if you go back in as too far down, then you're going to have to treat a much longer length of lesion, and you may actually lose the side branch. Don't you think so, Sayed? Uh, so Correct. apart from the type of wire selection, yes. uh, any specific technique of m maneuverability of the wire, the technique like penetration, sliding, any preferential method during uh, uh, negotiating this uh, proximal cape? So first thing is the uh, CTO wire tip. It should be one millimeter and uh, about 30 to less than 30 uh, degrees. And uh, penetration or sliding or drilling all depends upon the morphology of the proximal cap. For example, if it's a tapered uh, uh, cap and it's a fresh young CTO, then you only need to just to slide the wire through it, like fielder uh, FC or maybe pilot 200. Just a uh, slight rotation and pull it to slide through it. If it is a old CTO, uh, in the very uh, tough proximal cap, then you need to drill through it. You drill, I mean you uh, push the very, uh, 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 say, uh, the CP12, 12, 12 gram tip load and taper tip, and do 90 degree clockwise counterclockwise rotations with the for, uh, forward uh, push with the single hand or with the two hand. While in this uh, uh, Gladius or uh, Pilot 200, uh, you can uh, use this rotational movement, full rotation. They use the slide through the channels. So, 
Okay, say so this is all right. Every time we we we, yeah. we can picture it. I yeah. think you can picture it that every time wires is, is going to uh, wire, it's going to go so to the septal we, branch. Yeah, uh, it, it was going to yes. the septal branch. It was buckling to the septal branch. So what will be the next strategies with us? These are some of the strategies the, uh, that we can see from the diagram that the wire is buckling into the septal. So we can escalate and de-escalate the wires. So now it is discussed the escalation and de-escalation with Gaia family and Conquest. So I think it's a little bit of discussion okay. about... Okay, uh, Getting through the proximal cap is the real challenge. If you have a taper, it's a different CTO altogether. If it's in biggest origin and you cannot penetrate, then use your micro. That's the time when you just touch the, you know, push with the uh, micro and then break the proximal cap. Once you've got your proximal cap, and then you can down escalate and try and find a channel and go through. Uh, you know, so that I think is the real role of uh, the CP, the, the Concourse Pro to to the proximal or the distal cap. Uh, otherwise, unless there's a huge amount of calcium. It, 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 it's not useful. Once you just break the proximal cap, then switch over to a, a, a pilot or whatever you want to have to follow the channels. Escalation means just you go for a stiffer wire, whereas a de-escalation, you tend to down, come down to a, a softer wire. So that's uh, how things are. Yeah. Uh, a stiffer wire would be able to penetrate, the, especially the proximal cap, better. Uh, but of course, the risk of uh, uh, submintimal plus also going out of the vessel is much higher. So that's the reason why. So, oh, uh, so yes, right. Uh, now, the, the uh, other the options. The cap and the side should not uh, start with this uh, softer wires, the fielder or XT, because most of them yeah. go to the uh, this side branch or submintimal. Better you start with the intermediate load that's to the 3.5 or 4.5 guy second or guy third. Or, uh, even better, you start with this uh, CP12. Go for a few millimeters, say five millimeters into the cap, and then push the micro catheter into the cap, then take this or de-escalate, and then change it with the Pilot 200 for C2 body tracking. Yeah, we would choose a stiffer wire from beginning. Yeah, side. yeah. I, I, the same thing. I would uh, not use a XTA for this. Uh, I would use a stiffer wire. Yes. Uh, so just one point, uh, I, uh, I don't have a personal experience with it, but uh, I was listening to a webinar and an, an operator educating this. To hit the proximal cape in the center, what you do, you inflate a one-to-one -one balloon in the proximal portion, and then on that wire, you hit the central of the proximal cape. What is your experience with it? Have you ever tried it? And another is, when you inflate a balloon, the inner portion of the balloon, I mean uh, the part of the wire which is inside that balloon, the balloon is going to hold that wire. So will you feel that or will you be able to move that wire even then if you inflate the balloon? Okay, say so there you are. You've got, uh, you know, <laughs> we, we're going to discuss that strategy yeah. afterwards. Yes, you can, and this is well used during the peripheral. Tariq and I, we've been using in the peripheral with the balloon, and then you wire it so that it's in the center. But when you inflate it, it's not going to be high pressure. It will not grip the wire. The gripping of the wire occurs when you go very high pressures, 20, 24, and so on. And then it will dilate, expand outside, and it will expand in, and it will grip the wire. But in this case, no, it will not. The alternative options which we yeah. have in our mind, we should have in our mind if the wire, uh, if the proximal cap is impenetrable or it is ambiguous. One is to inflate a balloon and side branch and puncture the proximal cap. So the a deflection other, method. Yeah, the other yes. method is to uh, do iOS in the side branch and then puncture the proximal cap with a stiff wire like Confianza. Eight French. Yeah, you can't eight use French, French. Yeah, that's why eight French was selected from the beginning. Another option is to use a double lumen microcatheter like Sasuki or Crusade and puncture the proximal cap. Another option is to use an angulated microcatheter. These are some of the cases which were done by me where there was ambiguous proximal cap which was, and the first case was done in by Venture with angulated microcatheter and in the last case it was done by a double lumen microcatheter to puncture the proximal cap. Okay, before that, just a short turn uh, from both of you, Said, and uh, so, uh, on this, on this aspect. comments about the uh, manipulation of the Gaia wire. 
Gaia wire is a special wire. It has a, a stiffness in its rotational axis. When we rotate it, we should not over rotate it, especially if, if, it, uh, if, if it is flexing or bending on itself. But if we are passing through the CTO body, and because of some calcification, uh, this uh, uh, guy wire is very flexible in its longitudinal axis. If it flexes or bends, we should not over rotate it. Otherwise, it will cause bleeding in, inside this uh, CTO body, and we will lose the tactile feeling of it. Yeah. So yeah. we can uh, redirect it uh, very easily, but we should uh, manipulate it very uh, in, uh, in a very slow movements, not too much, say 30, 40, and then uh, forward and backward movements. It's very, yeah. axis, it's, it cannot be bent during rotation, but in the in the, it's a longitudinal axis, it easily bends. When it's buckles are bent, we should take it back. Yeah. And then we should try to yeah. find a different channel. So for me, I direct and push, buckle, I pull back, turn a bit, and then push again. So it's, it's going to be like, so it's a different way of uh, using normal wires. And guy next is even better than the routine guys. So I escalated from the uh, fielder XTA to the Gaia second wire and it punctured the proximal cap. But it went uh, 70 milli. So now we have the option of bailout ADR. So what are the, this is now the algorithm for the uh, ADR techniques like entry is done by, this is primary ADR by uh, dissection, like a knuckle wire or using a cross boss. And then re-entry is done by these different techniques which will be explained later. So say, and just, to, just to cut you sh here, because you are now uh, in, in your cross proximal cap. Yeah, yeah. You are in the sub-intimal yeah. or you are in intimal? I'm sub-intimal. You are in yeah. sub-intimal, so you want yeah. to try to get back in. All yeah. right, okay. So these are the alternative options which we must have in our mind. The one is the power knuckle. As all, know, all you people know about this uh, technique in which a balloon is inflated over a microcatheter and then a knuckle is made by a polymer jacketed wire and pushed. So this is also called um, the um, uh, star technique in which it spontaneously can enter. But it has got some demerits like it has got poor long-term uh, results. Another option is side base, in which a balloon is inflated in the side branch and microcatheter is trapped, and then knuckle is formed and pushed. Carlino technique, in which a microcatheter is used to, uh, a, a, a wire is used to puncture the proximal cap, and then over that wire, microcatheter is advanced, and some contrast half to one cc is injected, which causes some micro dissections and makes a track into the seventimal space, and then a polymer jacketed uh, knuckle is made through that channel and recrossed. Can we see your uh, actual case? Before? Yeah, yeah, it's coming, it's coming. So these are alternative options, base plus power knuckle, another option. And scratch and go is another option in which a uh, sharp wire like the Confianza is used to make a scratch and then with a polymer jacketed wire a knuckle is made and advanced. So you can see lots of ways to actually re-enter, isn't it? Yeah. But to yeah. me, I feel that you should be comfortable with one or two first, understand the concept, yeah. practice it, and then we want to, you may want to try to move on. Okay, sure. I think if you use a softer wire, you'll get a small dissection. If you use a stiffer wire, you'll get a big dissection. Yeah. So you must use that dissecting wire very carefully. You must never twist, just push. That's the way to uh, dissect. Now, knuckle wire is something that you got to get used to. Yeah. <laughs> they always say that it's brute, it causes dissection, but you are going to be quite safe. It's that is, you're going to be in the vessel. The most important thing is you don't want to go outside the vessel. Yes. So, from, uh, for primary ADR, this cross boss is also an option, and a specific indication is for uh, isolated occlusive ISR. Dr. Wire penetrated the the entry methods. It's a wire based and technique based. Now, now we can see from the slide that the wire, the Gaia wire is in the, clearly in the seventimal space. Uh, how Play. we can, uh, please play it. How we can play. tell that this is in the seventimal space? Just play, please. Please play. 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 play from there. Go back. Go one slide back. 
Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, I'm going to pray. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Yeah. I, I well, I I I'll, we'll probably know the answer. This is where you need to have two, you know, it's two injections very important because in one plane you think that you're in, another plane is not. Very common. So don't be confident in your list check in two views and then you start to balloon it and you find that there's a perforation. So do remember that. All right. Yeah. Uh, now we have uh, the next slide, but after these few slides. Yeah. yeah. yeah the angio clip is after that, yeah. So parallel wiring technique, we have an option of parallel wiring. Another option is to straight away go to the ADR technique. Yeah. Here, uh, what I did was that um, I just exchanged the Gaia wire over a microcatheter to a um, Miracle 12 wire and to attempt ADR technique using Stingray Balloon because uh, you have to uh, navigate the Stingray Balloon or a Miracle 12 wire. Okay, so, so maybe we, we, we have time, don't worry, say, we have time. So we, you know, when you see the bifurcation, uh, in terms of uh, uh, tri uh, you fail integrate, then it's either integrate, or in this case, he's using a, a, a cross, uh, what you call a Stingray to try to use it, or maybe even knuckle wire. So, what's your preference? Do you like parallel wires, Ed, and then? Yeah. So, you like the parallel wire technique, and, and Tarek, you? Yep. Yes, Jabbar. Yeah. Uh, Tariq Saf, you said that uh, there is a recross, uh, this is a double uh, dual lumen catheters. Why not other? Uh, can you use uh, like Rosier, Sasaki, uh, other uh, dual lumen catheters? Ports. On the distal end. One proximal one distal, you can uh, puncture from the subintimal space at 300 degrees of the vessel arc. And uh, it is OTW, both the port is OTW and recross. The distal is of OTW, the white, white one, the blue one with the stylus as the second uh, port for it. You know, it, it, it again depends on what you have on your shelf, isn't it? I don't have a recross. A lot of people don't have a stingray. And, and you know, sometimes stingray is something that you've got to learn how to use it to be successful because it's a very expensive get it out. So yeah. even if you don't have it and you want to use parallel wire, which is commonly used, please ensure that you know it, how to use it, uh, you know, the concept behind parallel wire. But I, I personally feel now that the parallel wire technique is getting less because I find that the success rate is not as good as with an, uh, using an ADR device. The, the, reason, so, yeah. Yeah, the reason the parallel wire was not used because as we can see there is already some uh, hematoma formation obscuring the distal vessel. So if we had used the parallel wiring, there was probability of extending the hematoma yeah. Yeah. and uh, uh, losing the um, re-entry. Right. So and this is also the reason why, if it's possible, try not to inject and integrate as much as yeah. possible because then if you have Just a hematoma, it will expand. And this is going to be a one major factor for failure. So inject retrogradely as much as possible. And the reason the uh, stingray, uh, the intention was to take the stingray balloon was to do some uh, straw technique also with the side port of the uh, stingray balloon. And that's why the Ed Fringe Guide was used because we can do a straw technique which is to take a, or the wire balloon and inflate it and then do a straw technique. Okay. So, so perhaps you can show so, us uh, so how you cross. Uh, step or point here because the main reason for uh, re
and the space is too big and you don't have control of the wire. So these okay. are, this is the diagram of the straw technique. So the straw is to reduce hematoma, right? Yeah, is to prevent it by using a trap liner. And then uh, now the re-entry strategies. Into the so, yeah. The best uh, re-entry re option is to use a stinger balloon, which is basically a flat balloon, and it has two exit ports at 180 degree from each other with a very stiff wire with a probe at the distal end. Now this is the diagram of the stinger re-entry, which is also a technique called the stick and swap technique in which a stinger wire is used to puncture the uh, to make a pathway into the uh, true lumen and then with a polymer jacketed wire, uh, it is crossed. Another option is to use a double lumen microcatheter like the Recross or Sasuki or uh, Crusade. These are the diagrams of the double lumen microcatheter. These are available with me, so if anyone, uh, any of the fellow wants to see, these are available with me, the different gadgets like the crossbars or the double lumens. Another option is to use an angulated microcatheter to achieve re-entry. Now, this, the first uh, picture shows our case in which the uh, Miracle 12 fire is clearly in the subintimal space and we are attempting the re-entry. So what we did that uh, before uh, advancing a stingray balloon, I, uh, first, I thought about a technique which is called LAST, limited integrated subintimal tracking in which a stiff wire uh, most likely uh, uh, tapered wire like the Confianza. A uh, uh, 90 degree bend is given to the that wire and re-entry is attempted. Although it is not successful most of the time, but to um, uh, save some cost, I, uh, I gave some uh, this angle to the uh, Miracle 12 wire and attempted the last technique, which was uh, now, another option is AFR, which is not practiced commonly. So I attempted the uh, last technique, and luckily it, I was successful, and I gained entry into the true lumen, but the wire went into the uh, branch. branch. So what I did, uh, that I just pulled the wire and redirected it into the true lumen. Now this is the process where the wire is being pulled and, and redirected. Before the distal cap is called redirection. And if the distal to the distal cap is called re-entry. So, so if uh, redirection from the side branch was not successful, the, we have the option of using the double lumen microcatheter to redirect the wire into the main vessel. So luckily I was successful and uh, there was a sudden release of uh, resistance and the Miracle 12 wire entered into the true lumen as is shown in this clip. Very important point. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I used the Gaia wire to enter into the subintimal space. And when I just took the shot, I was clearly in the subintimal space. So I knew that even if I down escalated, I'm not going to enter into the true lumen. That's why I didn't attempt the uh, technique of uh, uh, this escalation and de escalation. Another important point is the relation of this micro catheter to the wire of the uh, tip wire. Because if you are wire-based re-entry, you keep the micro catheter proximal until you are sure that your wire is in the true lumen. Yeah. While in case of uh, knuckle, you can easily advance your micro catheter up to the distal cap. Yeah, I think that's some important points. So did you change your wire and- Yeah, uh, yeah, next. Yes. In the, uh, so another um, uh, step is to change the wire to a work, uh, workhorse wire. So what I did that I tried to screw the Corsair Pro microcatheter, but as is shown by uh, backing off of the guide, the Corsair Pro microcatheter is not being advanced. So what I did is that I used a Sapphire Pro 105 balloon, and it crossed with difficulty into the distal uh, artery. So these are the algorithm for the balloon uncrossable lesions in which the wire crosses, but the balloon or the microcatheter doesn't cross. Always, always watch the tip of the wires. It's
common. It's not, sorry, it's not uncommon for you to get a perforation. And you know that a wire perforation will almost never seal. So you got to be very careful. And if patients come back in the cath lab or in the ward and you know, they have their tamponade. So the wire is very important and you want to change it as soon as you can. So say, do you want to uh, yeah. just wrap up and uh, tell us what you did in, in the end? I think it's just, uh, now it's gonna be straightforward. Balloon, exchange wire, yeah. balloon, stamp. Yeah, the, the, another important point is that uh, with stiff wires, it is also always, most of the time, it is, uh, uh, you know, the, this is, uh, this is the radio opaque portion is lengthy. So it is sometimes difficult to place a stent uh, because the markers yes. are obscured. That's why it's also important to, another uh, important point is to exchange it with workhorse wire. Now, as you will see that the workhorse wire will have only 30, cent uh, 30, 30 millimeter uh, radio opaque and the rest of the wire is uh, radio lucent. So the different techniques in my case, what I used is the, I used a trapping balloon mm. to uh, exchange the microcatheter. So the other options we have is the extension wire and the yeah. trapping balloon. Yeah, it's better to use a trapping balloon because you have better control. Extension wire, sometimes you pull out or sometimes you don't control it, it goes a bit deeper. Uh, but I think trap balloon is still the easiest of, uh, yeah. and the safest of the lot. We can trap it with, with ordinary balloon, like an air French V. Uh, can, uh, we can trap it by 3 uh, three O balloon. Right. But the specially designed balloon, like the Kosabi or the trapper from the Boston Scientific, they, they don't have uh, the uh, inner lumen. So it's very easy to manipulate and reuse it again and again. 15 seconds to show okay. your, your, okay. your final shots. Okay, now the uh, uh, wire, workhorse wire has been, uh, has been placed. Now at this point, the uh, feeding artery uh, was decannulated because this is important to uh, prevent any injury to the feeding artery. Now, what we did that, uh, yeah, ballooning, uh, the sequential ballooning was started from Sapphire 105. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. another balloon, 1.5 and 2.5. So stenting was done distally. Then proximally, Another stent was placed from left man to LAD, but as you see, uh, the, the, at the ostium of the LAD, the stent has not expanded, and that caused some trouble. And also, the, circ the circumflex is now wired. So the trouble was, I will show you now. Done. Wait. No. Now, okay. this is the final result. Yeah, okay. All right, I think... Uh, the RT is, uh, you know, chronically hypoperfused, hyper so it will grow with the passage of time. Yeah, I think uh, good results in the end, so that's a uh, case yeah. well done. So, um, any, any addition from Tariq or Said? Um, while doing a CT or PCI, uh, it's important to have a tray where micro coils are present. Sometimes distal wire perforation are very is mentioned by Sir Rosely that it's very uh, commonly done in, in such wiring. Uh, so micro are important. And then you are able to choose which micro catheter is important because every micro catheter is not delivering that micro coils. So fine cross is one which is, uh, should be available on the tray for micro coils because it's coming with 0.018 yes. or 0.014 sometime. Tarek, any last words on this? Any, any questions, last questions from the audience? Yes. Uh, uh, it is, uh, you know, the Stangri is expensive and we don't have it in most of the cath lab. What is the mo uh, tips and tricks, wire-based re-injury, for uh, wire-based re-injury uh, when uh, we are in uh, uh, false lumen? Uh, sorry, I didn't get a question. Tarek, no? Yeah. yeah. Wire based re re First thing is the tip of the wire. You take a stiff uh, wire, this is a CP12 or Hornet, and make a 90 degree bend, short, four or five millimeter, and do fenestrations. Then take this wire out and go with the fielder FC or other uh, softer wire at the end. De escalated. Yeah. Okay. For, for every, now, last. Lastly, uh, for every CTO, we must be ready for any complication because yeah. at the end we had ruptured and dislodged stand balloon because of the uh, waste in the mid of the stent, which was uh, removed by trapping technique. 
And uh, the benefit of using the eight fringe guide was that it was uh, easily okay. trapped and removed with the three ONC balloon. Right. So I think I, I need to wrap this uh, uh, because uh, the next session is going to come on board. So this is an integrated CTO uh, session looking through. Number one is a case that was presented and uh, the features that suggest that, uh, you know, uh, the difficulty in this case of integrate. Uh, uh, wire selection, micro catheter has been discussed uh, and, uh, you know, went into the false human and uh, the importance of trying to re-enter and uh, he was, uh, this, uh, it has been, dis uh, we discussed about the need of, or different types of techniques of uh, re-entry and also the, the devices that are used. Syed has got some of the, you know, the devices yeah. there. If anyone who wants to uh, learn how to twist uh, crossbars and so on, uh, please uh, share with him and, you know, be with him. Um, I couldn't have done it with, of course, Syed, who pre prepared everything, and uh, Tariq Shafi with his wisdom, and Syed Tahir also with his uh, experience, and all of you, because I think uh, a greater part of you have uh, uh, experience in all this and added on to the discussion, and, uh, you know, I, I learned uh, uh, quite a bit from this myself. And, uh, you know, it's just a matter of uh, being, to me, you have to be analytical, you have to think about what is the best technique, play, prepare for it, if you're very new, then uh, you know you stage the procedure and not do it on an ad hoc basis, and remember, uh, you know try to not no harm. If you fail, you can always think about bringing it back again or referring to another person who is actually doing uh, this uh, uh, in a, a more experienced way or calling someone to help you. And those are important because in the end, patients are important, and you know CTOs are something that uh, you want to, the benefits sometimes may be uh, questioned. But I believe that uh, if patients who are symptomatic in a large area of uh, ischemia or uh, jeopardized myocardia, it would benefit the patient. So thank you once again, and it's great to be back in Pakistan. Thank you.